Asher, is that your bare knee? Are you wearing pantalones? Uh, I am wearing pants. How dare you? You think I would show up to a Zoom recording for CBC not wearing pants? All right, we are back uh, with the first Grand Prix of this COVID pandemic season in Skate America in Las Vegas. We have a Canadian medal in the men's. Nathan Chen is the men's champion yet again. Duh. What else did you expect? And cardboard people, two-dimensional, locked in depth. Are they the new audience of the figure skating future? Also, how you can say by switching to Geico. Welcome to another episode of That Figure Skating Show. I'm Dylan Moskovich, my lovely co-host, Asher Hill. And uh, we're going to bring you some insights about the Grand Prix that just happened in Las Vegas that looked a lot like an episode of Black Mirror. Well, that was uh, an interesting event. You're absolutely right. Uh, the fact that a Grand Prix even occurred is a feat of itself. Before we get into this episode of Skate America, uh, are we ready for the gift exchange? Oh, sorry, what? did you for a gift exchange? I got you a gift. Dylan, it's our anniversary. This was our very first episode. I can see how much I mean to you. I, <laughs> I got you a Sporting Life gift card because I know you're about that Sporting Life, and you got me nothing, which is... It's fine. It's fine. I am the gift. Um, you're welcome. Boo! Boo! <laughs> I want monetary things. All right. So the men, uh, Nathan, unbeaten in two years. No surprise there. Uh, not his cleanest free skate. Nathan had two very uncharacteristic mistakes in the free, popping a triple axel and a quad tau, which now it's way more surprising, like way, way more surprising for him to make a mistake. And that's more newsworthy than him skating a clean program. He only scored 187, which is a great score. But for him, for someone who's been scoring in the 200s in a free program uh, for the last how many years, definitely disappointing for him, but still won by what, over 20 points? Yeah, it's kind of funny too, though, because normally the first Grand Prix of the season, we would be saying, okay, he's off to a good start. He can build from here. But who knows? This could be the only competition of the season for him. So maybe he's, you know, disappointed. He feels like he missed his only shot. I don't know. <laughs> At the same time, like with with everything that's been going on and all the uncertainty, he's, he seems to have still grown as a skater. His maturity has taken another step up. He seems to float well. He's like, it's like he's riding the wind while he's skating. I saw some some Patrick Chan type movements and fluidity in his skating. It was, uh, yeah, I was very impressed with um, how his level rose up even more. I could still see growth in his skating, which is ridiculous because, you know, we've been in lockdown. <laughs> I know, especially him training in California, they've had at least two or three. Not the cleanest, but uh, still growth somehow. And that's why he is the champion of the world right now. Over and over and over again. Let's get to the big story, which is uh, Keegan Messing, uh, the lone Canadian. This season, I think, this whole Grand Prix season, uh, because we know that Skate Canada is no more. Uh, and I think he's the only Canadian that will compete this entire year internationally. Internationally. So Keegan may have been the only Canadian and didn't have that much support in terms of a team, but the Geico Lizard made a great appearance, uh, giving him a thumbs up as he was waiting for his music to start. And I'm sure he felt that support. He he felt that insurance, um, you know, <laughs> behind him. I thought he looked good. I thought it was a smart move keeping his free program. I really like that Guns N' Roses program for him. Uh, it gives him a lot of a lot of freedom to kind of skate and, and be himself out there and, uh, you know, displaying a lot of power as he always does. But a lot of polish and um, kind of consistency, also considering who knows what training has been like, but I mean, he's in Alaska. I have no idea what it's like there right now. Um, <laughs> so secluded and he might be the one who's just getting the most ice time. Who knows? He also gave Canada a nice little plug in the kiss and cry. It's pretty good to have only one Canadian competitor for the whole year, and they won a medal. That's that's 100%. We're killing it. Great job, Geek. Yeah. Little mistakes here and there. It kept them to a minimum. Like some some downgrades, they weren't small. 
There were small mistakes, some downgrades and things like that. But I also want to shout out to his commitment to that uh, last Hydra Blade in his free program. He was literally like hugging the ice, like be like, oh, thank you. But like snow up and down his face. I've never seen such commitment to that before. Uh, so shout out to you. I was actually concerned when he came up. I'm like, are they going to count that as a fall? <laughs> like clearly you, <laughs> like there was, there was more point of contact than just his legs. <laughs> also I want to give a shout out to uh, Ilya Melanin. A little 15 year old uh, hot shot who kind of came out of nowhere, busting out quads like he was brushing his teeth. Wasn't a thing. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super easy for him. I was really surprised. Um, you just never know. And like, again, one thing that's really cool about these uh, national Grand Prix is that uh, people will get a chance that you wouldn't, that they would never usually get. Uh, because they're not well known and they're not internationally ranked. So it's been really cool to see the uh, talent in America uh, really come to the surface. Ooh, see that girl, watch it sing, getting the dancing queen. Do. Okay, <laughs> so why am I singing that? Because Mariah Bell did a medley to ABBA, which, uh, fun fact, is one of my favorite bands. I know. It is weird, a fun fact. But give me, give me, give me a man after midnight, preferably without COVID. Okay, with <laughs> so Mariah Bell, let's start off with her, the champion, uh, first time Skate America champion. First time winning a Grand Prix gold medal. Coming out here not only with the artistry, but as well as the technicality that we've been seeing from her last year, which was such a great, great season for her. I'm glad that she's continuing that momentum, even though it seemed like uh, the lockdowns and the pandemic would definitely kind of kill that. And then of course her free program, which is to the ABBA medley. Uh, I'm not like super duper in love with it, which hurts me to say, uh, because one, it's Mariah Bell, two, uh, it's Abba, who are my faves. I love her, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another I'm gonna get another chance. This is very generous of you. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if there is another chance. <laughs> interesting to see her try and go for something a little different. Um, so you know, I commend her with that. And I guess if there's a year to do it when you have no idea what's happening. Now's the time to start uh, experimenting, even even trying out doing both programs with the same outfit. You know, who knows? Maybe it could be a new fashion statement. It's true. At the time of pandemic, who can, who, who can afford two dresses still? <laughs> this is austerity measures now. We're in austerity measures. One outfit for both. Make sure it's versatile. Um, <laughs> second place, Brady Tunnel. Uh, you know, to me, queen of consistency. She looks good. Uh, I think uh, some jumps look a little off, but again, she's working, probably working on a new technique, not probably for sure. Uh, you know, there's been rumors of her working on a triple axle and a quad could be locked and loaded, uh, which would be really cool to see uh, Brady bring her skating up to that uh, next level of uh, technical difficulty because again she's so consistent last year uh she did qualify for the grand prix final but because she doesn't have those powerhouse jumps like quads and triple axles uh no matter if she skated clean she was still behind those uh russian girls we're always uh seeing the depth of american women They've been so consistent every year. There's somebody new, someone better, someone on par. So uh, America, they know how to produce uh, women champions. And a shout out to Karen Chen, who came second in the free program with a beautiful skate. Uh, she was quite enchanting. Um, <laughs> shout out to her, shout out to that pun. <laughs> I shout out to her for giving me an opportunity to throw a pun out. So like, thank you. We didn't even make a Karen joke, so I mean, like, it's fun. <laughs> so Ice Dance here at Skate America. First place, Madison Hubble, Zachary Donahue. Uh, second, Caitlin Hawaiak, John Luke Baker. And third, Christina Carrera and Anthony Ponomarenko. So 
Rhythm Dance uh, stayed the same as last season. Uh, musical, Finstep is the mandatory element. Zachary and Madison um, winning Skate America again. Beautiful, beautiful free dance to Hallelujah. Uh, skating to the Katie Lang version, which I, to me is the only appropriate uh, and correct option. Uh, choreographed by Scott Moyer. And you can definitely see the touches of Scott through these programs. I. Uh, as much as Maddie is always the star of the show, I see Zachary a little bit more coming out, and I'm wondering if Scott had a hand in hand in that. Absolutely beautiful. My favorite program, though, of, of this event was Caitlin Hawaiik and Jean-Luc Baker. Uh, they did this Blondie slash Philip Glass uh, mashup. And now I understand all their pictures that they've been doing for the gram, which has been looking very artsy fartsy. Uh, I finally get it. I understand why it's this program and it looks sick. Let's toss it on over to the pairs. Uh, so the podium, we have Alexa, Simeka Kniram and Brandon Frazier, their first event together. They win, uh, Jessica Kalalang and Brian Johnson in second and Audrey Liu and Misha Mitrofanov. Uh, and third, uh, kind of a young team I'd never even seen before. Alexa and Brandon, it feels like they've been together for 15 minutes and they look like they've been skating together for years. Uh, I, I am so impressed with this team. I would say they're my new favorite team. Their, their lines match perfectly, they're in sync. Technically everything looks really neat and tidy and it doesn't look like a struggle. Even their transitions. I mean, the first Grand Prix of the year when you're with your normal partner usually looks messier than that. And these guys just started. Uh, I'm I'm kind of speechless. <laughs> Very excited to see what they'll do with some more time together. Asher, is that your bare knee? Are you wearing pantalones? Uh, I am wearing pants. How dare you? You think I would show up to a Zoom recording for CBC not wearing pants? I yes, don't like I do. I, <laughs> I think you're one of the people in the world that can pull it off. Uh, sorry, someone's at my door. Can you can you give me one second, please? I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the actual stars of the show weren't people at all. Uh, they were just facsimile of people. It was the cardboard cutouts. Uh, so I think you actually had to pay to get into the crowd. Um, uh, and to get one of your faces onto these cardboard cutouts. Yeah, it, it does. It looks like an episode of Black Mirror. It's kind of creepy. It kind of <laughs> makes me feel like where, like, where is humanity headed? Is this what, <laughs> is this what it's going to be like now to be a performer in any field? I can't say I know what it would be like to uh, perform to an audience of cardboard people. Um, with their soulless eyes. But I guess that's kind of like what you come to expect when you have an audience in Vegas. Uh, most people's eyes are a little soulless and empty at that point. But you know they're there day in and day out supporting nonstop um, with the same level of enthusiasm. Did you like my interpretation of the audience member? Was it good? Was it convincing? I thought you were pro. I thought you were pro. Oh, no, no. I, ah. I was acting. <laughs> I went to Juilliard four years. <laughs> <laughs> acting, my dear Dylan, acting. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, you know what I'm kind of, I actually would have bought one too, just for the joke. At first I was like, why would you want to buy one? But I'm like, you know what, I would. And I would put Barbara Fusarpoli's face on it, her stare down from the tw uh, 2006 uh, Olympics. And so like when you fell on your jump in the Lutz corner, you get up and it's just Barbara Fusarpoli looking at you in disgust. You know what? That would have been a nice anniversary gift I could have gotten you. Missed the boat. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, I had forgotten about it, but now I remember it and I am seething. Well, uh, worst anniversary ever. Thank you, Dylan, for that. Uh, but uh, also thank you guys for tuning in and watching us uh, talk about figure skating and really excited to have been talked about Skate America. Shout out to the skaters and organizers for putting on an event and competing during such trying times. Uh, next week, Skate Canada is unfortunately canceled. Such is life, but we have plenty of things to talk about. Skating is never ending. We're going to have some great Canadian content for you. We'll make sure that we have some things to entertain you with and talk about your favorite wonderful sport. Also, make sure that you stay up to date with Battle of the Blades. 
Uh, Asher Hill is the current leader after show number one. Uh, but my team, Team Vakim, is coming for him. And uh, I don't know if he's ready for it. Um, he's looking a little cocky up there at the top. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Sorry. Make sure I you can't hear you from up here. <laughs> we'll catch you next week. Bye.